Hey guys, I'm Laura Canby McCaskill, author of Fallow and Her Keepers, and today I am here in Marshall, North Carolina with Shannon at Heart of Horse Sense. <laughs> So Heart of Horse Sense <laughs> funds, trains, and supports trauma-informed equine-assisted psychotherapy in Western North Carolina. So the horses that are here, and oftentimes the clients that are here, are in some need of help, mm -hmm. right? So we partnered many, many years ago with Help for Horses, the rescue that used to be right down the road, and actually now it's still right down the road, just in a different location, mm -hmm. right down the road. <laughs> um, uh, we partnered with Hope for Horses to try and find homes for horses that were happy, healthy, young, and unrideable. Uh, and unrideable being the key term there. These horses were great, they were wonderful, but for whatever reason, physical, mental, emotional, they couldn't be ridden. And so we started trying to find a way to give those horses a meaningful job. Mm -hmm. And that was right about the time that I started to investigate equine assisted psychotherapy, which is therapy for people through working with horses. So when you say therapy, who comes for the therapy, you know? Well, so it tends to be, our, some of the biggest groups that we work with are veterans, mm -hmm. first responders, and those who have been diagnosed with PTSD. Mm -hmm. We also work with a lot of folks that are survivors of some kind of trauma. So we work with survivors of human trafficking, of sexual assault and violence, we work with survivors of domestic violence, intimate partner violence. We work with trauma, mm -hmm. and sometimes that trauma is really complex, like in those cases, a lot of those cases, it's complex trauma. We also work with a lot of at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with kids that come from, as I say, you know, less than nurturing backgrounds, mm -hmm. and so they may not have diagnosable PTSD or trauma. They may have diagnosable PTSD or trauma, um, but oftentimes they're just kids from hard places. How many horses do you have here? At any given time, 25 is a good guess. Mm -hmm. I think right now we're at 30. Um, and we have actually have borders for the first time. We didn't used to ever have any borders. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have about, uh, oh, well, actually the borders are in the back left. We've got a couple of borders over here. Um, and uh, the, the boarding part of our facility is uh, really small, deliberately, because of the therapy work that we're doing here on the farm. And you're on social media? Yeah, absolutely. So both Horse Sense of the Carolinas and Heart of Horse Sense are on Facebook. And they're both on uh, Instagram as well. And your website? Websites, uh, both of them. So HorseSenseOTC.com and then HeartofHorseSense.org. So two different organizations. We both have, make our home here in the Marshall location. Uh, it's just one is primarily seeing clients 9 to 5, Monday to Saturday. And then the other is primarily all that sexy grant writing, and fundraising, <laughs> and training and developing new young programs so that they can do quality professional work. Because it's so easy to do this and not do it well. Yeah. Um, that uh, we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, do you take volunteers? Absolutely. Yeah. So we totally take volunteers. Uh, we need volunteers for uh, just general care. I call it chop wood, carry water. Mm -hmm. So there's so much that happens. There's 110 acres here. There's fence repair, there's trail clearing. Uh, those are some of the bigger things that happen. And, and putting up hay, so if anybody wants to put up hay, it's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? And then there's the regular day-to-day -day type volunteering, which is scrubbing buckets and cleaning the aisles, sweeping aisles, and doing things like that. So half of everyone's time is spent in service, and then the other half is spent in learning. So the, we may have, you know, my husband, who is a, a horsemanship instructor may teach horsemanship mm -hmm. to the volunteers after their first hour and a half of, of service work or we might do some kind of group activity that we would do with a group that might come from the VA okay. for example so we have groups come from the VA all the time we have groups
groups come from youth programs in Asheville and the region. So we might do activities with the volunteers like we would do with clients so that they can see what it feels like. I was going to ask you, so you have two events during the year? Usually, uh, if not more, okay. if not more. If you guys remember, I was at the event earlier this year, yeah. uh, the main event, and that was an amazing time. Um, yeah. And I would recommend that anyone come to those. And yeah, we do the main event usually in the spring and fall. We didn't do one that haven't done one this spring mainly because of we're still everyone's still feeling out the universe with COVID. Is there anything else you want to add? One of the horses just uh, uh, blew out when you said that. <laughs> and the thing that we talk about and we teach all of our clients here is something we call horse breath. And horse breath is just. <sighs> and anybody who's hung out with horses knows horse breath, right? And we teach our clients it so that uh, I can kind of get in, I can self-assess and decide how I'm feeling uh, and see if I need to take another breath, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes the horses are the ones that know that we need to take another breath. So the fact that he just did a big blowout makes me think, I probably need to take a breath. <laughs> so if you see people in the grocery store in line or at Home Depot making that sound, they may have, they may have had an experience at all. Well, thank you so much for having me over and introducing me to all the horses, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.